there's a fine line between uh, when praise and worship needs to be pushed and when you need to pull back. Satan often will fight us on praise and worship because it's plowing the ground and getting the seed, or, uh, getting the ground ready for the seed to go in. And if you're a farmer, you understood what I just said. If you don't know it, then you don't know. There is a hum. Well, we'll quit humming. <laughs> Did it quit? Did it quit? Did it quit? Don't tell me I can't do it. Won't God do it? You can hear me? Good. Um, yeah, not a matter of fact, I'm too loud now, ain't I? Yeah, 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 I ain't got loud yet, y'all. All right. Is that better? Perfect, right? Thank you so much. All right, Jim, you can start filming. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. If we're already on, we're on. <laughs> Just the way it is. There's a fine line between when, when it's too easy. And sometimes we have words that need to come forward. And so Satan will make it easy on those days for us to press through and go beyond. And so, but, but I want to tell you something, and I don't want to mess up anything uh, or anybody's theology, but we need the word. Amen. I'll try it over here. We need the word. I need, we need the presence of God, but we need the Word of God Amen. to touch us and change us. Amen. And the Bible says not to be conformed to the world. I, I think that's in Romans chapter 12. Uh, not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind through the Word of God. Right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, not singing. Faith, faith does not come by us just getting together. Now, I understand that it's important. There's a social aspect that has to happen, and we need that. But today I've got something heavy that's been on my heart for a couple of weeks, and it's really been bothering me. Anybody been watching the news lately? I'm not talking about the presidential election. I'm talking about the news about the church. There are challenges that we are faced with. We're coming out of Pride Month, and... Some of the uh, people that have been on vacation last week said we were kind of shocked at the number of churches that had rainbow flags in front of them and, and those kind of things. And, and I have to go with what the Word of God says. Amen. I don't make apologies for it. I don't, I don't apologize for what God has put in His Word. I will not. I refuse to do it, and I don't care who it offends. I'm going to stand with my shoulders square because I believe it's important that we actually get what God has to say about subjects, and they may not be comfortable, but they must be dealt with. And so right now I'm in the throes of dealing with this, and what you don't know is that in General Assembly we're having to deal with things because of these issues. And so I, I told my wife I... I we have situations here that need to be taken care of, and, and I don't like to go anywhere without my wife. Amen. Amen. I got married to be with her. Amen. I didn't get married to run off and do tours around the country. If you got to do that, I understand that. I did that one time when I was working with Bell South. I was working in Miami, and my wife was in North Florida. I hated every minute of it. And I thought, if I ever get back to where this doesn't have to happen, I don't want this to happen again. And so that's how I feel, and that's just the way it is. I, I don't like it. There were things that were going on because we had small children at the time. I'd go to Miami, and for two weeks I wouldn't see my kids. And Destiny was so young that when she would come back, she would look different slightly in two weeks. That's how young she was. I need the babies to be quieted or taken out, please. This is a very important message today. I can't be competing with babies. I don't need them walking around, and I don't need them making noises. I need you to hear this because I, I need to deal with something that's really become a problem in the church world, and that is secret sins. And there's a problem with secret sins. How many have noticed that there have been a lot of things that have been exposed lately? It's not comfortable, 
It's not easy to deal with, but it has to be dealt with. There's one man, and I won't call names today because I don't think I should. There's one man who was having an affair with a 12-year-old. A national known pastor. And it's tragic what has happened. It's not just sin, it's actually criminal. Hello, somebody. And it's a blight on the church. And you have to understand that when secret sin goes on, it affects more than just one or two people. It affects the entire, according to one of the stories we're going to look at today, it can affect the entire nation. And the Lord doesn't want it happening in his church. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you, and I want to tell you some things. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23 says this, Be sure your sin will find you out. You think that you get by with things because you think nobody was watching. But as my dad always said to me, and so wisely, there is an all-seeing eye that is watching you. The story is found in Joshua, and it's right after the great triumph of Jericho. And what a military strategy that was. Let's walk around this walled, fortified city for seven days with our mouth shut and not say anything and just keep walking in circles. Everybody, men, women, children, babies, just walk around. And on the seventh day, not only walk around at one time, let's walk around at seven times without a word, without a peep. But at the end of the seventh journey on that day, we're going to blow trumpets and we're going to lift up a shout. Amen. And when we lift up a shout, there's victory that comes. Amen. Now, it actually looked like a bomb went off and blew the walls down, all except for one dwelling place, which the Lord had promised because a lady was kind to the spies that went in. And she was Rahab, known as the harlot, who later would be in the lineage of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> It don't, and what that tells me is it doesn't matter what I was. <laughs> but sometime during the night after everything's fallen, there's this guy named Achan who gets up in the middle of the night, and I'm sure it was in the middle of the night because he snuck over. He went over the rubble. And he looked in and he began to see things that he desired. And he saw a wedge of gold. And he saw 2,000 shekels of silver. And he saw a Babylonian garment. And he thought to himself, man, this is nice. I'll just take this for myself. And I'm going back to my tent. And nobody will know. And nobody will see it. So what he does is he gets it, he gathers it up, he takes it back to his tent, he digs a hole in the earth. And he tries to hide it in the earth. And we're so guilty of trying to hide things in the earth. We try to bury it, and then he puts his mat over it, and he goes to sleep except he can't go to sleep because he did something that he wasn't supposed to do, and he was excited because he got away with it because nobody saw him except for <laughs> there's a God that's watching. I came here to tell you there is a God that is watching you today and this is no time for you to be playing games. Listen to Joshua chapter 6 verse 18. And you by all means abstain from the accursed things lest you become accursed. When you take the accursed things and make the camp of Israel 
a curse and trouble it. All the gold, all the silver, all the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are concentrated, consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. All the silver, all the gold, all the vessels of bronze and iron are, concentrated, are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into his treasury. And yet they took it, he took it anyway. Can I talk to you today? I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and you can get mad about it. The Bible says in the book of Malachi that there are people that are still doing the same thing today. Oh, brother, are you going to talk about tithing? I'm just going to tell you what the Bible says. If you don't, if you don't tithe, Tithing is not just giving money away. Tithing is bringing it to the storehouse. Not spending it any way that you want to, but bringing it to the storehouse. That's what this house is. It is the storehouse, and what we do is provide for other people from the storehouse. And we're able to bless people. And he said, bring it to my house so that my house may be full so that when people come and have a need, we can actually bless them. And he said, if you do not do that, oh, I'm making some people angry. If you do not do that, you're a thief. It's in there. I'm going to show you some scripture today that you ain't going to like. Is that all right? Because you're touching the accursed thing, and not only are you bringing a curse to you, you're bringing a, church to this, a curse to this church. And your family. Oh, please. Y'all reading my notes? <laughs> Sandy, I know you have read them. <laughs> and I want to talk to you about these things today, the power of secret sin. Sin has evil power, dark power, destructive power. Sin, when committed, will always bring defeat in your life. <clears throat> in your family and to an organization which would include the church. Israel had just defeated the fortified city of Jericho and there's this little tiny city next door called Ai. That's the way you spell it, A-I. And there was just a few little people there. And yet and all, because of the sin in the camp, they sent out 3,000 warriors. Now, notice this. When they went to Jericho, they didn't open their mouth. They didn't pick up a sword. They didn't do anything except blow a trumpet and shout. Now they think, we're going to send our people out here. We're mighty. They're going to be scared to death. They're going to quake in their boots. But that's not what happens. 3,000 warriors go over here, and all of a sudden, they're turning tail and running because they killed 36 of them. Joshua 7, 18. And you by all means have, excuse me, I already read that. Psalms 1, 3 says this. We should be like trees planted. This is what we should be like. We should be like trees planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season whose leaf will not weather. And whatever we do should prosper. But yet, no, they weren't prospering. There was a problem. Because the power of sin will cause defeat to come in your life. If you're not winning in your life, in an area of your life, it's usually, it's usually because there's sin in the camp. Making you happy today? Nobody likes to talk about sin. We want to talk about prosperity. Beloved, 3 John, and it's verse 2. I put one verse two because some people won't know there's only one. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. And I want to talk to you today not about money and financial prosperity. I want to talk about your soul prospering. 
Do you know that if you have peace of mind, which includes your soul, your emotions, your will, that you have a lot? Come on, somebody. And there are people, we've had a couple of different things. Justin preached on things in your mind. Brandon preached on winning the war in your mind. And it's all really leading up to a point that we need to understand that peace of mind is a bigger deal than we make out of it. Do you know what the difference between somebody who is sane and somebody crazy is? It's just how they think. That's it. And if you're not careful, you can not have prosperity in your mind, but we're supposed to. Proverbs says this, eleven. Proverbs 11.25, the generous soul will be made rich, the soul. And he waters, and he who waters will also be watered himself. There's something that God likes about you giving. It's a big deal, and he makes you to prosper. And I'm sick to death of hearing the prosperity gospel and how that somehow or another you give $5 in an offering somewhere to somebody that says this is great soil, and suddenly God owes you everything. How stupid is that? I'm tired of false gospels. You know what the gospel is? The gospel is this. We have a sin problem, and we could not solve it on our own. The only way to have that dealt with was with the blood of Jesus, and that's it. (laughs) That's the gospel. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. And buried, he carried my sins far away. But rising, he justified and freed me forever. He's coming back. What a glorious day. Man, what, that's the gospel. Give $5 and give $1,000. I, I, I heard one man say this week, somebody's got to write a check for $1,000 today. Somebody's got to write a check for $250,000 today. Somebody's going to write a check for five hundred. dollars We can't do what God's called us to do in, with a $10 donation. I'm so sick of that junk, aren't you? The way that they tell it, we could all send a thousand dollars in, we'd all be multimillionaires tomorrow. You better watch what you watch. If you're not walking in victory in some area of your life, and I'm not talking about money. Oh God, I hate money. He knows I do. The love of money is the root of all evil. I need money matters and money matters. After that, oh, who cares? I hate the stuff that makes one man think he's rich and another man think he's poor. Y'all forgive me. Hmm. The power of secret sin is this. It hinders prayer. Watch this. Joshua starts to pray about the situation, Joshua 7 and 6, and he's praying about this situation because these guys got killed. Joshua tore his clothes, fell down on the earth, and took dust and threw it on his head. What kind of prayer meeting is this? (laughs) Hey, Lord, we're so sincere, we're tearing our clothes up. We're throwing dirt on our head. Don't you see how sincere we are? Can't you see it? Can't you see it? God says, got my attention. Now verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Get, get, just get up. Why are you, why do you lie on your face? Verse 11 I think is in there, is it? Israel has sinned. True. 
and transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. Or they have taken some of the accursed things. What accursed things do we have in our lives? And stolen and deceived, and they have put it among their own stuff. Now, wait a minute. Talk with me, somebody. One man did it. But that's not the way God looked at it. Mm. One man held up the blessing of God on the whole nation. God said, get up. You're wasting your time and mine. <laughs> Listen. Prayer is not a substitute for repentance. Amen. I think I want to say that over here. Prayer is not a substitute for repentance. I'm going to shout myself. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yes. If you want God to answer prayer, you have to deal with the sin in your own life. Huh, you don't believe that, so let me just give you some scripture. Psalm 66, 18 says, If you regard iniquity, iniquity which is causing you to sin, Iniquity is the proclivity that you have that causes you to be drawn towards things. And then if you go towards them and you actually partake of them, you see. If you regard that iniquity, in other words, I just can't help myself. I really like looking at that. I really like doing that thing, even though I know I shouldn't. If you regard it, if you esteem it, if you love it, if you cherish it, go look up what regard means. If you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord says, I will not hear you. How's that for a promise of God? Oh, I know, I know. I'm glad it doesn't say that if you've sinned, the Lord will not hear you because yes. the Bible did say for all have sin. there's a difference in sinning and regarding it there's a difference in sinning it and repeating it Lord forgive me I'm going to do it again I, I, I like it I like the way it makes me feel, whatever it is. could be pornography. I like it. could be eating the wrong foods. But, 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 Pastor, I like it. could be drinking. But, Pastor, I like it. I had a friend of mine down the road that told me, he said, I just like drinking. And he said, I'm a diabetic. I said, well, then you need to stop drinking because that's one of the worst things you can do as a diabetic. He said, but I love it. I said, then you know what's going to kill you. The wages of sin is? Yeah. Oh, man. Isaiah 59, verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand isn't short that he cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So he will not hear. There's a promise of God not to hear. But the modern day church, you know what we do? We say, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to do it again. But bless me anyway. Because this doesn't really matter. Because I heard some theology that says, you know, your grace is sufficient and I can do anything that I want to and it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to God? Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> no, 
Now watch what Joshua's prayer was. Joshua 7 and 7, watch this. This, this. this is so much like us. And Joshua said, alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over here? Anybody ever said that? Lord, why did you bring me here? <laughs> you, you brought me here <laughs> to deliver us unto these people to destroy us. Oh, that we would have been content where we were on the other side. How many prayers are like that for you? <laughs> I had a friend of mine, and he was complaining because he had to pay income tax. He said, we prayed about it. My wife got a job, and when she got a job, it put us into a new tax bracket. Now we got to pay income tax. I said, yeah, but what about that other 80% that you get to keep? Yeah, but we got to pay income tax now. Oh, that we would have been content. We wouldn't have had to pay income tax. We were getting a check back every year. Now we got to pay in. Hmm. You ever blame God? You ever ask him, why would you allow this to happen? You know, the Bible says you have to love me. <laughs> I'm setting you up. <laughs> it may be because of the sin in your life that things have happened. Watch out, grandparents and parents. Here we go. You ready? Now really get mad at me. Maybe because of the sin in your kid's life. And you allowing it to happen. Oh, is there a precedence for that? This dude named Eli. Dude had two sons, Hophni and Phineas. And they were living reckless lives. And God got mad at Eli because he didn't do anything to restrict his sons. Eli was the priest. Yeah, but my kids won't like me if I tell them they can't sin. We told ours and still do if we have to. You know that ain't right. Hmm. Bless me anyhow. <laughs> Watch this. This is what I wrote. Prayer is not a smoke screen or a replacement for, for repentance. Not only does sin, secret sin especially, cause failure or hinder you from prayer, but it also hurts the people you love. Watch this. Aiken's entire family paid the price for this sin that he did by himself. As I mentioned, Eli was judged for his sin. Let me tell you something about sin. I heard this a long time ago. Gene, Gene Rice, which was one of the, the, the uh, guys that we happen to know, but he was one of the general uh, officers in the church of God, he came to our church, and he preached this a long time ago, and it's always stuck with me. There's three things about sin you need to know. You ready for them? Write this down. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you, cost you more than you want to pay. Number two, it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. Number three, it'll make you pay more than you want to pay. You know what the average DUI costs these days? Twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars, easily. Oh, you say, well, how can that be? It's not just the fines up front. It's the insurance that's ongoing. It's the breathalyzers that they have to put in the vehicle that you have to pay for by the month that you have to blow into so you can crank your car. I'll tell you that on, on, on the TV when they're making it look glamorous, do they? Easily. 
not to mention the enormous cost of drinking. I, I, I can't even begin to fathom how people can afford to do this stuff. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not to forget, forget the church for a minute, and that, but to be an out-and-out out drunk, I don't know how they pay for it. And I've seen them where they would rather drink than feed their family. While I'm on it, while I'm just meddling around today, let me fly my little airplane right through your harvest field maybe. The Bible says this, if you don't provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel who has denied the faith. If you won't work, Paul said you shouldn't eat. If you'd rather drink than provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel. I don't care how often you come to church. I don't care how many tears you cry down here. If you keep doing this stuff, you're worse than an infidel. That's a non-believer. And you've denied the faith. You know what the difference between a, a, an adult and a child is? Are you ready for this? A child wants their stuff their way all the time. You know what the difference in an adult and a child is? An adult wants everybody else to be provided for first. Come on, fathers. Amen. I'll take care of everybody else. I'm last on the list. Leaders eat last. You, you have a, a, a dinner around here. Amy, we went through this a few years back, didn't we? We had a dinner here, and she wanted to bring me a plate, and I said no. And I kind of got stern with her, and I apologize for that. But I got stern with her because I need to make sure everybody else eats before I eat. And if it happens, I, there's something left over, I'll eat, and I'll be fine. That's the way... Fathers, and I'm not just talking about in my local house, uh, uh, in, in our family. That's the way the father of the house should be. Amen. Come on, you potential preachers. You need to hear this Amen. stuff. Amen. You let everybody else get theirs first, and you take care of you last. Now you're an adult. Now you're a dad. Amen. Not a sperm donor. Amen. You're welcome. Let me tell you about the process of sin. Joshua 7, 19. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give God the glory and tell us what really happened. And Achan answered and said to Joshua, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord and Israel with what I've done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, I coveted and took them. And there was hidden in the earth in the and there hidden in, in the earth in the midst of a tent. I want to remind you of something. There's there's four things that I, I see here. Number one, I saw it. What happened to Eve in the garden? I saw that the tree was good. Number two, I coveted it. What it says, I coveted it. I wanted it. Number three, I took it. And the fourth step in this deadly process, I hid it. I, <laughs> Eve, I saw it. Saw it was for good. I wanted it. I took it. We ate it. And God came walking in the cool of the day. Adam, where are you, Adam? I was naked and I hid in the earth. Y'all didn't hear me. Be, be, because what was Adam made from? And you want to know one of the worst things that you do in the plan? And I'm not accusing anybody in particular. I'm just telling you. Let me tell you what I did. I was in the earth. And this piece of earth 
I'm just going to tell this piece of earth. I'm just going to tell that piece of earth. Oh, be sure. I know I, uh, I'm doing better preaching y'all amen and right now. <laughs> We're all made from dirt. And you think that you can hide your little sin and you think that you got by with it? Hmm. So we talked about the power of sin. We talked about the process. That's what we just talked about. I saw it, coveted it, took it, now I hit it. You know what the problem with looking at things are? You tend to go towards what you watch. We're adults in here today. You know what the problem is? People are letting their kids watch movies. And they're... If JoJo and Ray Ray moved in down the street from you, you wouldn't say, here, go down there and peep in the windows and just see what they're doing. Especially when they're being intimate. But we'll let them watch crap come across a TV set and at a movie. Here, just babysit yourself for a little bit. We don't care what you see. Now they've saw it. That awakens a desire. Then they, once they want it, then they take the chance. And you wonder why teen pregnancies at an all-time yeah. high. And then the last one, they, they want to hide it, so what do they do? The abortion is the answer. Oh, pastor, you're preaching so good today. power of sin, the process. But here's the thing you need to know. There's a punishment for sin too. Achan and his entire family were not only stoned. Watch this. Joshua 7.25. Why have you troubled us this way, Lord? So all of Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them. And they raised a great heap of stones over them, still there to this day. So the Lord turned from his fierceness and his anger. Therefore, the name of that place is called Achor to this day. And I know there's popular teaching out there that says that God's not mad with people. Ain't that great? Ain't that just wonderful? God don't get upset with anybody. Really? You rape a little child, I'll get mad with you. Amen. And it's the grace of God that they don't turn me loose in a prison cell with you because I would, I would take care of that quickly. Hello? Uh, and, and, and you know what the problem? I'm too much like my daddy. Y'all didn't hear me. Psalm 7, 11 says this, God is a just God and is angry with the wicked every day. And there's people spouting off, God's not angry anymore. God's okay. God, does, God don't care what you do. You believe that crap if you want to. It's inconsistent with the Word of God. Let, let me read you 2 Thessalonians uh, 1, verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance is what the King James says, on those who do not know God and who refuse to obey the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I know what people think. I had to go to the New Testament because the Old Testament, you know, Psalms, well, that's the Old Testament. That don't count. Yeah, your, your Bible don't count. If it's Old Testament, it don't count. Really? Okay. Then let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God. Fire. 
Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is What? I'm telling you, secret sin is one of the most dangerous things that are out there. Right now, if you pay attention to the church world, there are men, big time names that are falling like dominoes. You want New Testament scripture? Here you go. The time is and now has come that judgment must begin in the house of God. Amen. And if we scarcely escape, where shall the sinner and the ungodly be? Ungodly people who go to church every week because it's popular, but think, I can do what I want to. God don't care. He's not angry. Sister Pat said he's just. Did he take out some things on Jesus? Absolutely. And if you'll, if you'll approach the throne of grace in the right attitude. Grace is plentiful, but I was talking to Kent Rogers yesterday, my pastor buddy. He said, yes, but it's not plunderable. What we were talking about is people who think that they're getting by with everything because nobody saw it. We had 12 pastors. 12. They were meeting in a log cabin and bringing in call girls and thinking that they were getting by. Big names. It's tragic. It is tragic. And thinking nobody sees, nobody knows. But there is a God who knows and there is a God who will expose. Amen. I thank God that he will forgive I thank God that he will conceal. <laughs> when he's approached correctly, you can bank on what he says. If you hear some Jay Hugh, I'm trying not to say bad words, <laughs> a Jack something or another, you, you, you hear some donkey get up and say that, that that you can do anything you want to and it's okay. They're lying to you. They are. Hell will be full of people that went to church. That's the scripture. Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, I believe it is. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter in. I think it's down around verse 21, 22, somewhere in there. He said, but he who does the will of my Father. Book of James, y'all ready for book of James? James is brother of Jesus, serious guy. He said this, not to just be a hearer of the word, but be a to do what it says. So I don't have a choice but to square my shoulders and stand up under scrutiny, stand up under criticism, and tell you that sin is bad and it will take you to hell. I 
I want to make sure y'all got it. Sin is bad, and it will take you to hell. I, I need to talk to this section. Sin is bad, and it can take you to hell. Did y'all get the message? What was that? Sin is bad, and it will take you to hell. And not only will it take you to hell, it'll cause you death on this planet. You hear me? You know what we need? We need an old-fashioned revival of repentance. Where people quit lying, people quit cheating, people quit stealing, people quit cussing their kids out, quit watching pornography, thinking nobody cares, nobody sees, it doesn't matter, and God is watching, and you're in danger of judgment, and you don't know it. Jonathan Edwards did that great sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And he said this, he said, We are walking on, as it is on fabric. And the way he described it, it reminded me of burlap. Do you all know what burlap is? Yeah. Do you know how wide those threads are? And he said, it's as though we're standing on those threads in slippery places, and it is only God that sustains us and keeps us on the balance. And at any moment in time, he could blow his breath and you'd be gone. Right. Jesus said, don't fear man who can kill the body, but fear the one who after he kills the body can cast your soul into hell. Y'all done, or, or, or can I preach a minute? Because Jesus bled so that you don't have to die in that. Are you ready? Jesus bled in the Garden of Gethsemane. His, the Bible said that his sweat became his great drops of blood. You know what he did that for? He said so that his, and this was his prayer when it was all said and done, not my will be done, but thy will be done because we need to be healed in our will so that we can actually carry out the things that God has for us. Amen. Jesus, the next place he, he bled from was where his beard was yanked out of his face and he bled from those spots. And what it was telling me is that he cared about, he didn't care about his look good so he can cover up yours. Amen. And healing will take place in our visage, in our appearance. Do you ever notice when somebody actually really, really gets converted, all of a sudden there's something different about them, that there's a glow that comes over them, there's a change that comes over them? Mm -mm. Jesus bled from his back. He was whipped. Come on, somebody. He was whipped so that you could have healing for the body. Amen. They planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and he bled from his head so your thinking could be straightened Amen. out. And he... For the mind... Then they nailed his hands to the cross and he bled from his hands. You know why? So that the works that you do could be purified and blessed. Oh, oh y'all ain't hearing me this morning. I wish somebody knew that he bled from his feet because if you knew that he bled from his feet, he bled from his feet so that we could walk right. We could walk this thing out. It's not just a once in a while thing, but it's an everyday thing. We get up in the morning, and this is the way you need to look at it. Well, my eyes are open. The war has begun. Yeah. I choose that I am going to walk upright today. I'm going to do the right things. I'm not going to live in secret sin. I'm going to go forward with Jesus. Then, then the final place, they shoved a, steer, a spear in his side and blood and water came forth so that we could have relationship with him and other people. Amen. Amen. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. But rising, he justified and freed me. 
I do not, I don't care what anybody says. You do not have to sin. You can live in victory. And it's time that the church started acting victorious again. Me and Justin are going to go to heaven, y'all. <laughs> one, one or two of y'all going with us. It's time to quit playing. That secret little thing that you've been doing that you think nobody knows. God, God puts his finger on something. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. Say it again. Personally, privately, and then if you don't take care of it privately and personally, he'll do it publicly. See, one of these guys that just got caught putting his hands in the pants of a 12-year-old girl. Hello, somebody. As a grown man, doing things to her as a grown man, what should only be done between a husband and a wife? And then got up and lied for 40 years and said, I had a little thing with a young lady, an affair. No, you molested a child. And God had enough and the pastor of over a hundred thousand people and God said no more buddy no more going to the parties with P. Diddy <laughs> another guy no more of this stuff. Called another one out and said, you better confess. And he got up and didn't tell what he did. He just was smart enough to get out of the limelight a little bit. Oh, that's in Dallas. I don't even want to fly through Dallas right now. <laughs> I don't I don't, I, I, you better listen. God will expose you. Not because he hates you. He hates the sin, but he loves you. Amen. Do you realize that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died. He didn't wait till you got it together, but he does call us to get it together. Amen. And it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to confess. It's time to confess our sins. Listen, I don't suggest that you go out and put it in tabloid, hey, I did so and so. That ain't what I'm talking about. But you need to confess to God. And you need to repent. That means walk away from it. Amen. Stop doing it. Amen. Stop it. Amen. Stop it now. No, you don't understand. I understand it's going to kill you and take you to hell. Amen. I've had more than one drug addict tell me, well, you just don't understand. I don't want to understand. I do understand. It's a drug and you're an addict and, and it's nothing more than sin and it's a sin problem. And us going, it's an addiction is an excuse for you to keep doing it. It is time that we repented and took. You know what happens if we blame the demon, if we blame something else, we go back to it. That's right. You hear me. I can come here to be popular today. Own it or it'll own you. Say that over here. You either own it or it will own you. Amen. I guess I'm done. 
We've been talking about it for a little bit, but if you don't take your thoughts captive, this is why the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. So you have to watch what you watch. You got to watch what you hear and you got to watch what you speak. Amen. Hello, somebody. Watch what you watch, watch what you listen to, and watch what you say. Because your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what happens when you let things in the heart? How do you do that? Through your eyes, through your ears. Close the gate. Close the gate. Close it. Turn it off. Guard against it. Because if you don't, it will win and you will lose. Did I mention that sin has power? Stop the process. I saw, I coveted, I took, I hid. Stop it. Now. Now. Go get rid of the dirty movies. Get rid of the dirt. Get something on your cell phone that keeps you from going to those sites. Give your wife the password. Wives, if you got that problem, give your, 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 your husband the password. I like what one, of, one of the things that one man said. He said, uh, he told this one guy, he said, I got a lust problem. He said, tell your wife. She'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> she'll fix it. She'll help you. Whew. What do we do? You got any idea? Y'all want to pray? Yes. Anybody need to pray? I suggest you cut. We're going to do this old-fashioned. You ready? Amy, I need you to get up. Justin, Lisa, and y'all get up. I'm going to do something different. All right, you ready? Push these forward. Anybody know what's going on? Pat, I need you to get up. Get behind them and they'll all push it one time. Y'all know what this is? It's an old-fashioned thing. I suspect instead of you getting tapped on the head this morning and getting enough oil to fry chicken in. <laughs> it's an old-fashioned thing. And I know most of you don't know it, especially if you're under the age of 30. <laughs> the way we used to do it. And we get down here and talk to God.